This is Django. I adopted him 12 years ago, and I soon found out in a strange way just how sensitive dogs' hearing is. You see, this guy even knows the difference between Charlie Parker and Gustav Mahler. Yeah, I know. Maybe you've read that dogs can hear four times better than us, or even that they can hear up to 45 kilohertz. But what does that even mean? And how can we, as musicians, benefit from this knowledge? This bothersome but entertaining behavior of Django <laughs> has made me want to find out what it is that he's actually reacting to. Come along and let's explore this crazy world of sounds, frequencies, timbres, and cute animals. Extreme musicians. Extreme gigs. Extreme challenges. Every time you write or play something that hasn't been done before, the whole world advances. Uh, unless it sounds like sh Extreme trumpet. Freelance musicians understand well that we must study and play in as many styles as possible to have a chance at making a living. Twelve years ago, I was living in New York City working mostly as a lead trumpet player. A year after adopting Django, I started practicing for an orchestra audition, which I won, by the way. But that's when he developed the habit of howling along to only the orchestral excerpts part of my practice and nothing else. He could be sound asleep while I'm playing my warm-up routine, and within a few notes of Mahler or Stravinsky, he'll be awake and howling. Let's start with the question of why he does this. Some people see this and think that I'm torturing my dog. I'm not torturing my dog. I've been with him for 12 years, and I would know exactly what his body language and his sounds would be if he was in any sort of discomfort. According to an article by the American Kennel Club, when a dog howls as a reaction to a sound, it's just a 15,000-year-old instinct from wolves who would howl together either to communicate a certain need or show the other pack members their location. Django also howls at the sirens of emergency vehicles, but not all the time. I guess he's picky at what he howls at. Anyway, to find out how this guy perceives sound, we need to start with the way sound is made. A frequency is, well, the frequency of the vibrations over time. I can snap my fingers at 60 beats per minute, or 1 hertz. Now two. If I managed to snap my fingers 440 times in one second, it would come out sounding like an A. Concert A, tuning note. But there's more than just that one note that you are actually hearing. Fortunately, one of my favorite instruments works in a really great way to show this. This is a Hammond organ. <laughs> And this is what the controls of a Hammond organ look like. You see, it has these draw bars that you can pull in and out. And when they're all closed and I play a note, no sound comes out at all. Now, I want you to take a look at this frequency diagram. This will show you exactly what frequencies you're hearing at the moment while I'm playing. Now. I'm going to play an F on the keyboard and pull out the draw bars one by one and you'll see what's going to happen. You see that controlling the draw bars and controlling the level of each harmonic changes the sound of the instrument. Now, if a dog like Django was to design an organ like this, he would probably want three to four times as many draw bars on here because he can hear the nuances of sounds all the way up past this chart 
to 45,000. Now, I'm going to play that same note on the trumpet. Where's my trumpet? Now I'm going to play the same note on the trumpet, and I want you to look at the frequencies. Looks familiar, right? Now I try it on the flugelhorn. You can see that there's a little bit less of the high frequencies on the flugelhorn. Now with acoustic instruments, as opposed to the Hammond organ, these nuances of frequencies continue all the way up. But you can see that the meat of the trumpet sound is right here in the mids to the mid-high sounds. In fact, this ribbon microphone that I'm using doesn't pick much up over about five to 10,000 anyway. In fact, that's the reason that I like to use ribbon microphones but maybe we should save that for another video. Applying this to real world situations is a two step process. The first is training your ears to notice these slight changes in tone and attribute them to certain frequency ranges. This can be done by messing around with recording software like this, playing a Hammond organ, or messing around with the harmonics on a string instrument like a guitar. This is essential when working with sound engineers, either in a recording studio or at soundcheck before the gig. The second step is applying it to your instrument. On the trumpet, there are huge changes in tone that can be made by slightly adjusting the pitch of each note. If I wanted to cut off the high frequencies, some would call that a dark sound. For example, if I'm playing a ballad, I'll play on the high side of the pitch. If I wanted a big full sound, I'll play right in the middle. And for a very bright high end sound, I'll play a little bit low. I know, buddy. Every instrument has its way of doing this, and finding it out unlocks many different sounds that you might not have thought possible. And sure, it helps to have a dog here giving you feedback. I hope Django and I helped you learn something new today. I'm giving away a lot of special secrets here, so uh, maybe consider buying me a virtual beer on my Patreon page. Don't forget to like the video, leave a comment to tell me what you think, and I'll see you on the next one on Extreme Trumpet. Bye-bye.